Test Drive with Graham Fletcher. As you can see, this week we're looking at the Audi 200. It replaces last year's Audi 5000 Turbo Series. We've had a good ride down here. It's very comfortable on the highway, so it'll be interesting to see how well it actually fares when we put it through its paces on the skid pad. See you later. It sits remarkably flat when you're throwing it through the pylons. Suspension is firm, and yet it's supple enough to be comfortable. The Audi 200 series features a five-cylinder, 2.2-litre, fuel-injected, intercooled, and turbocharged engine. Now, off the line, I've noticed this, there's a noticeable lag, but once the turbo kicks in, this thing moves, but the watch will be the final judge. Let's go. Once we reach our target speed of 80 kilometers an hour, we're going to throw the anchor out and see how well the Audi's ABS system actually works. Hang on. Very respectable. It came down well below the 30, which when we go back and compare it, that'll be just over 100 feet. Here's something you won't find in all cars. It's a ski sack. You open the trunk, put your skis in through, they come out through here, and they keep your interior nice and clean. Good idea. Getting the skis into the trunk in the first place is easy thanks to the low lift over. The Audi 200 is the replacement for the much maligned 5000 series. A report just released by the US federal government pretty much absolves Audi of the unintended acceleration accusations that have plagued them for much of this decade. The report states, and I quote, for sudden acceleration incidents to which there is no evidence of the throttle sticking or cruise control malfunction, the inescapable conclusion is that the driver inadvertently pressing the accelerator instead of or in addition to the brake pedal. I say a hearty hooray for the government because at least they're prepared to take a stance, unlike many other bureaucratic organizations. One other rather interesting fact that appeared in the report was that the peak complaint rates coincided with the maximum media coverage. Surprise, surprise. For a large car, the Audi is surprisingly nimble around town. On the highway, the ride was impeccable. In short, the suspension is a good balance. It is firm enough to handle, yet supple enough to afford maximum comfort. Power for the 200 is supplied by a turbocharged, intercooled, fuel-injected 2.2-litre engine that develops a healthy 162 horsepower. When the car is in motion, there is always ample power. However, from a standing start, there is a noticeable amount of turbo lag, meaning that the initial performance is very lacklustre. The interior is finished in a typically Teutonic fashion. Everything is very workmanlike. The instrument cluster is complete in every respect, and more importantly, the driver can pick up all pertinent information at a glance. The new style adopted by Audi surprised me because it is not that far removed from the 5000. One has to assume the name change and facelift were designed to boost flagging sales. Personally, I don't think the changes are significant enough to dump the problems they've had in the past. Audi have definitely done a good job with the 200 series. However, I do have my usual pet peeve. They've got too, too many levers on the steering column. The headlight switch should be relocated to the dash, and the hazard flasher should go in the empty spot in the center console. That aside, let's go to the scoreboard and see how I rated the Audi 200. The lackluster performance disappointed me because I was expecting a lot more. Let's hope the V8 version will add more oomph. We achieved the 100k mark in about 10 seconds. As is typical with all cars I have tested that feature anti-lock brakes, the Audi system is superb in every respect. Unflustered stops are achieved in a minimum distance. The 200 excelled in the handling department. The suspension system is one that should and probably does constitute a benchmark by which all other systems are judged. Generally a very peaceful environment. Only when you really push the car does the engine noise become intrusive. Our test 200 averaged 11.8 litres per 100 kilometres, or 24 miles per gallon. You'll be interested to know that this is one of the cars that will be hit by Mr. Wilson's gas guzzler tax because its mileage falls short of the 30 mile per gallon limit. Overall, the new 200 follows Audi tradition of being well constructed and well engineered. 
I hope for Audi's sake the changes in the US government report are enough to boost Audi sales because for one, I feel they deserve it.